you are the chief marketing officer of a leading bank. You are, uh, you know, dealing with millions and millions of customers uh, uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. When I threw out the 10 rules of banking out there, stop hiring bankers, go back to the core utilities, uh, contextual experiential marketing and so on, is this, does this resonate with you uh, or am I just smoking something? Um, no, it definitely resonates. I actually really liked it. I even liked some of the other uh, parts of the presentation uh, where you said that the uh, trust is so important. Um, and, um, and that we need to use uh, digital to actually bring, uh, you know, kind of enhance the human to human interactions. And I think this is, this is what I'm seeing, um, you know, in banking today. And it's, you know, we were kind of, uh, as banks, we don't move the fastest, right? As you know, so, uh, so when, we, when we met with digital, it was a big phenomena. And then everybody had a kind of a knee jerk reactions. You know, we are no, now going to throw throw away you know, our old ways and we will reposition ourselves around digital. And uh, so we will kind of uh, ditch the brands and ditch you know, the reasons why people liked us. And, um, and we will just um, um, you know, do everything smoothly and we will all be kind of uh, you know, challenger banks. Uh, but when we look at what customers really want, um, customers really want uh, a trust for them. This is, this is, this, you know, this is critically important. Um, people, um, if you look at the digital banks, for example, in the um, in the UK or uh, elsewhere in the world, and their ethos is actually not about digital. Their ethos is about transparency. Their ethos is about ethics. Their ethos is about you know enhancing you know human to human interactions. Um, so you know, digital will change our world as banks, but. Uh, you know, I think what's important, especially for our marketeers, is not to change, uh, you know, who we are and not to lose the reason why customers liked us in the first place. I think, you know, we will not become digital. I think we will use digital to be better, to be a better version of ourselves. Yeah. You know, when I look at the future of marketing uh, and every 10, 15 years, certain things change. In 1995, we didn't have uh, uh, nobody had a website. Then uh, now by 10 years later, people started having a website. Now everybody does. So there are lots and lots of shifts and changes that are taking place. To me, the internet, uh, when it first came out, and we were old enough to be able to remember that, uh, it was one too many. We were very excited, it became one too many. Then we get on, got onto the digital space and became one to one. My thesis is that as we go into the future, it will become more human to human where the technologies of the base will just be tools for us and support us. But actually we go back to human experiences, to human context, to uh, crowd-based engagement, user-generated content, things of that nature, which will help our marketing. And I have many case studies uh, to share with you. Is this the sort of thing that um, you see as a trend in this marketplace or are, is this still a long way to go? Well, it is definitely a trend that we are trying to, uh, um, you know, uh, work with. Um, see what happened with uh, with with us banks is, um, you know, we first when we saw digital, we wanted to uh, use digital to facilitate transactions and make it easy for customers to, um, you know, make payments and to, uh, um, um, you know, to um, you know, open accounts and so on. But uh, there are two main benefits when it comes to digital. Uh, one is, of course, the transactional benefit, but the Second is uh, more important, and that is um, that is you know our ability to make connections. And we found that uh, customers really um, you know look at banks, look to banks, especially the millennials. They look to banks uh, to um, um, you know to facilitate connections and to facilitate access to uh, access to knowledge. Uh, two years ago, we launched a, a community um, uh, around financial education. And we also used it with our with our uh, customers. And right now we've got over 100,000 members. And we found that customers not not, not only you know would they engage with us, they would also share um, views with each other. They would you know help uh, each other make uh, smart financial choices. And interestingly, they would even save us money because they would actually provide customer support to each other. So yeah. so uh, so this human to human interaction is definitely a. Um, you know, something we want to facilitate and, and bring more of, and that will kind of rehumanize banking. 
One of the uh, things that I, uh, when I spoke to your CEO, uh, Sandeep, uh, one of the things he mentioned that uh, a very large portion uh, of your client onboarding and client acquisition over the last 24 months or so uh, has been very young people below the age of 21. What was that new dynamic uh, that happened within uh, Adeep that enabled you to do that? Well, we as a, as a bank uh, work uh, largely with Emiratis. So, and that's a very young demographic uh, right there. Um, so they, and, and, and they really enjoy, um, you know, working with us and interact with us digitally. So they were actually the, the fastest adopters of, um, of our app. They actually bypassed the internet banking and they went straight into, uh, straight into mobile banking. What we also were able to do is we were able to launch a, a onboarding that didn't require the people to come to the branch so they could actually just open the account uh, uh, online. And that, you know, when COVID came, you know, we continued to have, uh, you know, new, uh, new customers. Um, and um, we actually, we had more customers because maybe the customers didn't find this option uh, uh, with the other banks. So we actually benefited, benefited from it. Um, you know, in a way, COVID, you know, accelerated or helped us, you know, um, in, in this uh, direction, uh, we always try to convince people not to come necessarily to branches if they didn't have to. And COVID helped us, uh, you know, do this even faster. So now we have, um, you know, we, we saw a major shift, you know, onto, um, uh, onto digital. So which is, you know, which is definitely a, definitely a good thing. Uh, let me talk about another major trend that is happening as far as marketing is concerned uh, for the future, Peter, and that is voice. Uh, last year, over 38% of the people used voice for some kind of interrogation, connection, uh, looking for data, information, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And going forward, apparently, it's going to be even more ubiquitous, and voice will become the, the primary interface uh, for digital onboarding, for various other activities, and uh, and that customer experience that we are talking about, how far are we in terms of the regulators and in terms of market acceptance to use voice for digital onboarding um, and for various other things? Because I mean, Siri is there and bots are there. We just talk to them. Uh, if you can talk to them, why shouldn't we be building our entire marketing campaigns around voice? Uh, rather than product and services and stuff like that in a different context, which is more more traditional. So, you know, that's one of the key things that is a, a way forward, particularly now in COVID. So in my opinion, voice is definitely uh, going to be more and more important. And especially it is going to be important as we, uh, as the Gen Z become, Gen Z generation becomes uh, more mainstream in our, uh, you know, in our bank and, you know, bigger percentage of our customers will be agency because those are the ones they actually use voice to operate uh, um, Google. They, you know, they talk to a uh, Siri as frequently as they talk to their friends. So it's going to be important. Uh, um, you know, right now banks are mostly using voice to um, to authenticate uh, um, uh, customers. Um, but 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 in the future it will be more as you as you described it. Our first kind of a um, exploration into this area is a, is a launch of a, a chatbot which we launched uh, just very recently. And the chatbot is, although it is text, it actually, you know, works with a uh, um, natural language. And, and, and we are able to, um, you know, if customer comes and want to say, you know, what's my account balance, we will, we will answer that, uh, you know, real time. And, you know, and we are able to, you know, through the, you know, AI driven and menu driven or, uh, um, you know, um, natural language processing uh, uh, um, capabilities, we are able to answer maybe 90% of the, 90% of the, uh, things automatically. And for the 10%, you know, the bot would automatically hand, hand over the conversation to the agent. And then you have an agent that doesn't have to talk to the nine people, but can really spend a really quality time over yeah. chat or over phone, you know, with that, with that uh, um, uh, one customer. So, yeah. um, so, so definitely, you know, actually AI actually helps, helps us deliver more human to in, human experiences. Indeed, because I, my, you preempted my uh, question on chatbot, which, which was about to come, but you already mentioned it. Uh, interestingly enough, uh, a lot of young people use it, but you'd be surprised that even uh, more older people are using it. Again, going back to this uh, millennial, millennial and baby boomer kind of uh, thing that in, in uh, new marketing, chatbots are being used by all generations across the board. Um, let me share a case study with you, and this was Lego. 
and, uh, and, and Lego about uh, three years ago, uh, basically to try, because they were coming out with a new series of services and products, they created a chatbot on Messenger on Facebook, uh, where if I wanted to buy uh, some Lego for my, my, my child, I could go and I literally talk to that chatbot. The average uh, duration of that chat was 3.25 minutes. Um, it, it doubled and in some case tripled the amount of uh, services they took. And what basically for me as a father, I wouldn't know the difference between one Lego and another. And they actually took us through that experience in a, in a real live experience uh, process. And I thought it was a very interesting example of how, and, and by the way, the sales went up by 37% in that holiday season uh, for Lego. And, and the customer experience in that moment was very, very superior. So that for me, customer experience and context is that experience in that moment. Uh, is, can that expand to our financial world and we basically have real conversations with, with more intelligent bots um, to give us genuine advice and not just a robo-advisor kind of advice, but real human advice? Definitely, I already mentioned the uh, the experience that we have with our with our uh, online community, and um, this is where people go and uh, they share their experiences. We have our own experts who come there and provide unbiased and un un unbiased advice. But um, of course, now we will go, you know, uh, um, um, you know, one step further and and really utilize uh, AI to provide insights that are useful for customers. If you look at for um, if you look at what uh, our brand and what we stand for, we stand one of the key values that we stand for is that we help people make smarter financial choices. Now, historically, this would have been a you know traditional uh, financial education. Now it is for us connecting people, but also using AI to provide insights, um, you know, through digital through digital touch points. So we're working on a, um, um, a program where, you know, the customer, when they log into the app, not only will they be able to see their, um, 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 not only will they be able to see their transactions and their balances, but they will be also given an insight saying, you know, there's a future uh, um, a payment coming uh, out of your account and maybe you don't have enough money right now. You know, you don't want, you want to avoid overdraft, you know, maybe you want to do something about it. And there can be a lot of, a uh, lot of other um, um, areas where we can provide, you know, advice that is AI driven, but very useful and, um, you know, delighting, delighting uh, uh, our, our customers. So, so are we going to be seeing the end of websites in the next uh, three to five years and basically AI, chat box, uh, voice and so on, and that's our engagement. Uh, essentially, we don't even need a website as we have them today. And, uh, and then just basically we just talk to a chat box and, and, and we talk to Siri or anything voice based and, and that disappeared. And this is about the future of marketing. So what I'm saying is if that is where the trend is going, which apparently it seems to be, and there's a lot of data around that, um, uh, are we even starting to get ready with that? Well, um, our website is uh, still important and we know it's an important source of research for our customers. But you would, uh, I've seen um, um, some new banks, um, um, some fintechs that actually built a, a full bank, end-to-end -end bank, including onboarding and so on, just on chat. So there is no app, there is just chat, um, and you know, and it does work. And you know, they, they seem to be able, uh, they seem to be able to, you know, bring in a lot of, uh, um, you know, uh, new customers. For our traditional customers, the app is becoming the primary touch point. So this, this also changes uh, a lot of things for us. Um, we've got 7 million uh, uh, logins into our app every month by customers. So, um, so if you think about it, this is like a, a billboard that all your customers you know, go um, pass by every day and you can give them you know, you know, what they need, not just for that customer, but also at that um, you know, time of day and based on the customer context and based on what the customer did just recently. So the, the app is a, is a great uh, tool for us to communicate, but we can only communicate if we can give a timely and super personalized uh, or hyper personalized insight. Only then will we kind of learn, earn the right to communicate through this, uh, um, uh, through this tool. Um, so. 
My question, uh, my next question is, is related uh, on the one hand uh, to, to the data part of it, and the other hand, obviously, uh, looking at apps. Now, we have over 3 million apps on Android and about the same number on iOS, and uh, we're only using a very, very small fraction of it. And there's a general trend towards super apps and, and cross-fertilization of apps. Uh, so if one app is already successful, say Spotify is successful, then you build on Spotify as opposed to try and build your own app because the cross-fertilization of data and content and behavior and context is so powerful. That's what uh, uh, Alibaba is doing. That's what WeChat is doing. Um, and there are, so are we now looking at potentially in the one or two years time rather than have proliferating with our own apps and have suddenly start aggregating these apps and have a few super apps and they will serve us? Of course, we will, um, you know, like what you see, for example, in, um, uh, you know, in China, um, you know, WeChat and, uh, you know, and similar uh, super, super, super apps, actually, you know, where the banking is just in the background and it's really just a utility or maybe you don't even need the bank. Here in, you know, outside of China, in this part of the world, you know, banks still have a very, you know, clearly carved out territory and it's largely driven by the complexity of our business and it's uh, driven by the, the regulations, which is, you know, that kind of like keeps a lot of people, a lot of people out. Of course, we have uh, fintechs who are coming into, into our sphere. And initially we thought, you know, fintechs would largely compete with us, but right now they actually, we work with them, we collaborate with them. They provide a lot of different, a uh, uh, lot of useful um, uh, features. We have, um, with Adi, we have worked with quite a few, whether it is on the, you know, data analytics side or whether it is, you know, for example, provided that, providing that community. So fintechs, you know, will of course, um, um, you know, change our, um, our world. When it comes to super apps, I think, you know, we will see uh, banking getting into areas that are not necessarily our historical core, but it has to be somehow related. Of course, we will not get into Spotify. We will not get into Netflix, right? But we can definitely get into e-commerce, right? Because we know who the customer is. We know where he's, he's spending. I can give the customer, uh, you know, very relevant um, insights as to, um, you know, where he can shop, where he can get a discount, and so on. So, for example, getting into uh, getting into e-commerce is a is a logical area. Another one would be, you know, other financial services such as insurance. I can, for example, plug in a you know, a comparative comparison site, you know, for the customer to get the best insurance deal, which is, by the way, something that we have done recently. So, so I think we will expand it. We will, um, you know, through open banking principles, we will bring in, you know, other partners, hopefully through our app. And we will also, of course, um, you know, feed, um, you know, other uh, um, platforms where, you know, we can, we will compete with others, but hopefully we will be able to continue to manage the choice of the customer. I think the, the source of data gathering is coming in from so many different places, it's coming from emails, it's coming from first name, it's coming from second name, et cetera, et cetera. So all of that is going to come together. And, and I think AI and data will play a, a big role in synthesizing that and clarifying our identity, our sense of identity. So you will know me as an identity from whichever source I'm coming in from and be able to actually start pulling it together. Let me just go back one final question on uh, on Dentsu because it is uh, uh, it is really quite relevant, and then I'll bring Ina back into this conversation as we wrap up the hour. Um, and that is that uh, this study was done by for 1,361 uh, chief marketing officers uh, over 12 territories, and basically their bottom line was that only 10% would be considered as frontier CMOs. CMOs who are engaging with the future digital uh, changes. Um, about 60% of them were considered just sort of hanging in there and about 30 to 40% of them were really struggling and going down. And, and the thesis that they came out with, uh, and which is what I shared very rapidly in our presentation when it was going wrong in the beginning, was that they said that it's now time for you know, hyper empathy getting closer to the customer, but from a very human point of view, uh, hyper agility, think like a startup, uh, hyper collaboration, that there are no silos within the, the institutions anymore. Everybody has to combine because 
uh, if one experience from one side of the bank, if I have a bad experience in my credit card department and you're throwing me lots of product uh, on my auto loan, I'm just not going to be engaging with you. And actually it goes further down in terms of our business engagement. So hyper consolidation. Uh, and externally, it would be through M&A and, and so on hyper collaboration between them. And finally, hyper transparency. So whether it's a regulator or the individual, we see all of that. And these are the five big trends that they are talking about for the frontier CMOs. And I see you, and from the conversations that, you know, comments that you have just made as a frontier CMO, is this the kind of, I mean, maybe not in this framework, but is this the kind of reality that you live with on a day-to-day -day basis? Well, we embarked on the digital transformation journey uh, two years ago, uh, actually almost three years ago now. And uh, we built an internal uh, digital factory where we built, uh, built, built, built apps. Uh, but more importantly, it had a huge impact on our culture because we now brought in uh, you know, the agile principles of working. And, and what you find is that you cannot really build that cult different culture in different parts of the bank, right? This is like you know, somebody's driving on the left side of the road and the other, some people, you know, driving on the right side of the road, you know, there's going to be a collision, right? So, uh, so we decided, although we know we as marketing, we were not part of that uh, um, uh, digital factory. We said, you know, this is how we want to work because uh, this is uh, um, very important. This is the future of the bank. And, you know, we need to align and we need to be able to move at their speed and, uh, and work really together. And, and I think that has worked, um, you, know, you know, really well. But it's going to be a major challenge. I think, you know, the digital transformation for banks uh, in general, you know, we all think this is a funding challenge in terms of getting the right kind of amount. But it's actually a mainly... Uh, a customer uh, experience and customer centricity challenge because that's not our you know net that's not our dna unfortunately and, and even more importantly it is a, a cultural challenge my idea was really to end with the the human side because i constantly talk about trust ethics empathy and and compassion and values as one of the core uh, drivers uh, as we look at the future of marketing and this is really a closing question for both you peter and and uh, ina is that uh, is it now time to look at a higher level of marketing where one of some of the studies are that uh, 135 uh, individual people with a social media outreach have more power in terms of impacting brand than about a million followers on the other side. In other words, the human to human connection and the human to human engagement fundamentally raises the level of new marketing challenges in the future. And, and we use technology just as an enabler and, and, and help us for that. But we go beyond that and say, now, how can we be more human? How can we be more connected? How can we be more relevant, more meaningful, and more contextual in our response? If you look at the, the young generations, the Gen Z who are coming up, but even the, you know, the Gen Ys, they, when you ask them what kind of brands they really look up to, they don't really mention brands that are so good at being digital. They are also always talk about brands that have purpose, that have kind of a purpose that they can relate to. The uh, yeah. brands that communicate their purpose or tell the story about their purpose in a way that is believable, that can be trusted. So, um, you know, I think our future, our success will be in our ability to uh, have a, you know, very authentic, um, um, real, you know, empathetic, you know, conversation with our you know, with our customers and also facilitating the, the kind of connections between themselves. Um, and, and, and from my experience, you know, you, if you are authentic and true, you don't have to be perfect, right? So customers actually, they would prefer a, a, a bank that would, you know, admit their mistakes than a bank that is, you know, maybe, you know, super digital and so on, but, but it's arrogant. So, uh, so, you know, we will talk more and more about brands in terms of, you know, human emotions so and i think that's a that's an exciting future and i think you know for us as marketeers this is this is something that we definitely look forward to